Dear friends, welcome to this week's virtual drush. This week we have the incredible privilege of Parshas Bo. And of course, what, what captivates us in Parshas Bo is Yitzhak Yitzhak and the Exodus. At the end of the Parsha, we read how Kalal Yisrael finally went free after 210 years of backbreaking, inhuman, barbaric mistreatment. We were free, not just freed from servitude, but free to embrace our destiny, free to travel towards our Sinai, to our Yisrael, to a unique and singular relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But before we get there, first the Torah finishes out the Makos. And I want to draw your attention specifically to the ninth Makos, the Makos of Choshech, Makos of Darkness. Remember, we spoke about last week that the Makos were not haphazard or happenstance, right? The Makos were designed, they were custom tailored, and they really served two purposes. Number one was to punish the Egyptians for some type of specific infraction visited or committed against the Jewish people. And number two, each Makos also contained a dramatic life lesson for Klaal Yisrael. So what was, what was the purpose of the Mak of Choshech of Darkness? So Rashi HaKadosh quotes a couple of ideas, but I'm just going to quote to you the first. Rashi asks this question, hevi aleim Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu bring darkness upon the Egyptians? And Rashi says something overwhelming. He says, Shahayu bi There were Jews, unfortunately, in that generation who were wicked. How were they wicked? They did not want to leave Egypt. They already made up their mind. They were not leaving. They were not leaving. And what happened? HaKadosh Baruch Hu needed to punish them. And how did He punish them? By taking their lives. And when did HaKadosh Baruch Hu wipe them out? When did He take their lives? During the three days of darkness. Why then? Rashi goes on to say, because had HaKadosh Baruch Hu stricken down these Jews during any of the other, other Makos, it would have eroded the theological message of the Makkah. If the Egyptians would have seen that Jews were being impacted by the Makkah just like them, then the Egyptians would have written off the Makkah to some freak occurrence of nature. It would have totally eroded the theological superiority that the Makos were supposed to go ahead and put forward. So therefore, Kodesh Baruch Hu's solution to this is Choshech. Choshech punishes the Egyptians. Now again, for the Egyptians, it was a midah kineged midah. The Egyptians were blind. They were enshrouded in darkness when it came to the suffering of the Jew. They didn't see the Jew. So the midah kineged midah was they were struck. The reciprocity was they were struck ultimately with actual darkness, immobilizing, paralyzing darkness for three days. And during that time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu killed out the Jews who, refu- who he knew refused, would refuse to leave Egypt. Okay, Over- overwhelming idea. Asks the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Zechitzat Deve Kadosh Avracha, I don't understand. You make it sound like there was only these group of Jews who didn't want to leave Egypt where the Risham and everyone else was Sadiqim. So, dear friends, remember, remember that the Gemara states, Gemara Sechisot states that when Klav Yisrael was crossing through the Yamsuf, right, remember again, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going ahead and ready to bring down the waves upon the Egyptians, the Malachim are wondering, why are you saving the Jews over the Egyptians? So in other words, even in the, in the celestial sphere, the, the Malachim, who, who are pretty wise, they can't really tell the difference in the Jewish people and ultimately again, and, 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 and Mitzrim. Furthermore, again, Chazal tell us that there were Jews who were literally carrying Avodazar, they're carrying idolatry with them. They took idolatry from Egypt and they went ahead and they took it with them through the Can you imagine this? Can you imagine? You're a Jew who left Egypt. The sea is split in front of you. You're walking through it on dry land. Forget about even all the other Midrashim that have to do with the Amsof. And you're carrying an idol? You're carrying an Avod de Zara with you? That, there were people like that. So Why did Kash Baruch Hu kill them? In other words, Kash Baruch Hu, let's be honest. If you're wiping out the Rishayim, the evildoers of Kalal Yisrael, that's a, it, might, it might include a lot of people. Right? And certainly, more than the group who didn't want to leave Egypt, what about the idolaters? Right? What about all the other sinners? Levi says, why is that Hashem Baruch Hu Davka focused on the Jews who didn't want to leave Egypt? Why is that the group that is called, like Rashi says, Shahayu hadar Rishoyim. They were Rishoyim. Who are the Rishoyim? Velohayu Ratsu The Jews who didn't want to leave, they were the Rishoyim. They were Jews worshipping Avodah Zarah. They weren't Rishayim. Jews who attacked Moshe Rabbeinu. They weren't Rishayim. But who are the Rishayim? The ones who didn't want to leave. What's the Pshat? Why, why is the group who didn't want to leave, why are they singled out more than unfortunately the other sinful circles of Klal Yisrael? And the Rebbe says something so beautiful. He says, because an unwillingness to leave Egypt represents an unwillingness to change. 
that we commit Averis. People commit Averis. People, we, I, you, we, we, we all commit Averis all of the time. But the Rebbe says something amazing. When you commit an Avera, that means I have a Yitzhahara, right? You, you pick your sin, right? I, I, I have a weakness, or weakness, halavai was only one weakness. I have weaknesses, so I sin in multiple areas. I have a desire for this, a want for this, a lust for this, a proclivity for this. Okay, and the truth is, maybe even I fail more times than I am successful. HaKadosh Baruch Hu could help me with that. I could help myself with that. I roll up my sleeves, I get to work, I make a strategy. And of course, again, I have the absolute ability to enlist the Yibon Shalom's help with that as well. But the problem is, when a person is change-averse, when a person refuses to change, when a person says, this is it, love it or leave it, this is who I am, and I'm not going to evolve, and I'm not going to morph, and I'm not open to different ideas, and I'm not open to living a different way, and I'm not open to improving myself. When you're closed off to change, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, there's nothing I, the Rebbe Shalom, could do to help you. I'm HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I could do anything and everything. But if you are unwilling to change, if you are unwilling to move yourself, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kibiyachal says, I'm so sorry, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. Says the Rebbe, that's the meaning in Rashi. When Rashi says, who are the Rishoyim that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kibiyachal gave up on? Who's, right? It hurts to say it, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't give up on anyone. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu does give up on people who give up on themselves. Who are the Rishoyim in Mitzrayim? Velo hayu rotsim lotzeis. Who was the Jew who didn't want to leave Egypt? What kind of person didn't want to leave Egypt, right? Wouldn't any normal person would rather die a free man in the desert than ultimately live out his life as a slave in Egypt? So who are the people who didn't want to leave? They were people who were change averse. They were people who refused the notion of change. They were people who were so firmly embedded and rooted in their identity that they could see nothing else other than what they presently were. Hashem Baruch Hu says, I'm so sorry. If that's the way you are, if you're not helping yourself, then I can't help you. And so Hashem Baruch Hu says, Rashi HaKadosh brings the plague of Choshech, ultimately again, in order to wipe out those Rishayim. The Rishayim, Shalom Hayu Rotsim Lotzeis, a refusal to change. And what an incredible, incredible Yisod. You could worship Avodah Zarah. I mean, you can't worship Avodah Zarah. But if you were to worship Avodah Zarah, Chesh Baruch Hu doesn't look at you as a Rasha. You're Mechal Shabbos, Chesh Baruch Hu doesn't look at you as a Rasha. You're immoral, Chesh Baruch Hu doesn't look at you as a Rasha. As long as, as long as you have a willingness to change. As long as you have an openness to change. But the moment you wall yourself off from change, the moment you say to yourself, Ani lo rotze lotzeis. I don't want to leave where I am. I am where I am. I am who I am. This is what it is. Kiv Yochla Kodesh Baruch Hu puts his head, his, he- his head in his hands and says, you know what? I can't help. I can't help. If you're walled off and closed off to change, then I can't help you. All that Kaddish Baruch Hu needs from us in life is a willingness to pivot, is a willingness to change, is a willingness to evolve, is an openness to do things differently going forward. And it's such a tremendous Yisod. And a Yisod, I think, that is so, it's, it's obvious, but yet it needs to be repeated over and over. And a Yisod, I think, that takes on such an important sense of urgency in the times in which we are living. Once again, another week of war, another week of milchama, another week of loss, another week in which our precious hostages still have not been returned to their people, returned to their families. And the change, there's so much change constantly happening all around us. And we've spoken about this many times, that when you see so much change going on in the world, we, that means that there's a koach, there's a koach of change that's here in the world. And you see, Eretz Yisrael has changed. There's so much positive change in Am Yisrael. Look at all of the beautiful achdos. There's so much negative change in the world. Look at all of the surge, surge, the incredible tidal wave of anti-Semitism. There's so much change. The koach of shinui, the koach of change, 
is alive, is rampant, is raging in our world. And we, as individuals, need to tap into that. Each of us has that one thing about ourselves. That we've told ourselves, I can't change. I can't change that thing where, like my ancestors in Egypt, I don't want to change. I don't want to change. Whatever it is. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a mida. Maybe it's a behavior. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's a variety of different things. But things that I tell myself, you know what? I'm not moving out of this. I'm not moving out of this. Why? I can't, I can't change it. It's not that I can't change it. I don't want to change it. And have we all have something like that. Whether it's an Aveira that we keep doing over and over and over, that I just haven't mustered off enough willpower to stop doing it. Or it's underperformance. I know I could be doing so many other things, but I'm just not mustering up the courage to push myself and propel myself forward. Whatever it is, there are changes that we have the ability to make, but we haven't yet made them. The wave of change is happening all around us, in our ancestral homeland, in our nation, throughout the world, and again, amongst the nations of the world. There is a tidal wave of change. We could harness some of that koach and use it to affect the type of personalistic internal change that each of us has to make. We all have an area in which we can benefit from change. And the words of the Rebbe ring so true. HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings the Makkah of Choshech, not just to punish the Egyptians, but to kind of get rid of the Jews who are unwilling to change. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if you're not willing to change, even I, God, the Ribbono Shal Olam, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Avinu Malkinu, Melech Malchi Hamlochim, if you're not willing to change, even I can't help you. But if you are willing to change, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, then the sky is the limit. If I'm willing to really change the things that need to be changed and identify the areas where change is really needed and at least on a most basic level, be open to change, then the Ribbono Shal Olam is willing to partner with me and accomplish more than we could ever imagine. We should be Zohar Mir Hashem to tap into the energy of change that has enveloped us in all areas and use it in a positive way to identify those areas in which we need to create change, to find the courage to affect that change, but at least for this week, for Parashas Bo, to at least be open to it. And if we be enter into this Shavasa Parashas Bo with an openness to change, HaKadosh Baruch Hu pledges that He is going to give us His hand, He's going to help us along that path, and Amir HaShem will be zochet to accomplish great things. Wishing everyone a good Nair of Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.